No, I didn't lose my mind. You may say I got a little bit soft, but my decision for stopping giving zeros for homework was actually something I thought was really, really helpful for students. If a student forgot the homework, didn't do the homework, or just turn it in way too late, I did not give them zeros. It was something that I developed throughout my years of teaching. But when I first became a teacher, I relied on the grading policies that I had when I was a student. And maybe you might be able to relate. Every single day, we had a homework lecture with notes. Then we had homework problems. We'd go home, do our homework. The next day, we had to turn in that homework. We immediately got a grade for that homework. If we didn't turn in that homework, we got a zero. If we got the problems wrong, we got it marked down. Like it really, really hurt our grade. There was a lot of pressure to make sure that you could do your homework correctly each and every night and not get penalized because the consequences were severe. You could actually have an understanding of the work, but if you weren't doing your homework or you weren't doing it correctly consistently, your grade was going to suffer. Now for me as a student, this was actually a very serious problem because one, I remember that I would understand stuff that was in class, but then I'd go home and I would completely forget how to do the homework. And so a lot of times, just to make sure that I didn't fail the class, I would either have to get help from somebody inside the class in the morning or right before class, or I had to do some kind of copying answers to make sure that my homework was finished, even if I didn't have a full understanding of the material. Also expecting students to like understand and comprehend exactly what was just taught that day didn't really work for me. For me, when I was learning math, it usually, it always felt like two weeks after the test was when I would get that aha moment of like, oh, I actually understand this material now. I don't remember any specific ideas that I kind of implemented. I do remember having to think a lot about what was the purpose of education? What was the purpose of assessment when I was in my educational courses in college? Now, here's the funny thing. Once you become a teacher, all this theory just goes right out the window because when you become a teacher, you have to manage your class and assess your students. And unfortunately, a lot of times for teachers, including myself, just revert back to the way that we were taught. It wasn't a great model for me. It was a model that had been used for years and years and many students were familiar with. So you can only imagine like, even though it's not a perfect system, it might be the best for the most amount of students. So let's just go ahead and use that inside my classroom. Here's the problem. Because when I started doing that, what I started to notice was I couldn't motivate my students to do the work. They were just as unmotivated as I was when I was a student. If students didn't understand how to do the homework, they just didn't do it. Now, a lot of these students weren't even as motivated with their grades. They simply were just like, I'm not doing the homework. I don't know how to do it. They wouldn't even try to get help. They're just like, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. Furthermore, they would just, grades would tank, right? I gave them zeros for not turning the homework or not doing it. A student could pass like tests and quizzes, like with their understanding, but they were failing or getting Ds because they simply didn't do the homework. And obviously it just didn't make sense to me. Like I, I can't fail a student just because they're not turning in a homework when they can show me that they actually know what they're doing. But I wanted them to do their homework. I didn't want students just to not have to do any work, show up on a day for a test, get a barely passing grade and feel that you have accomplished what I wanted you to accomplish for your understanding in this class. Like just because you could do a couple problems doesn't really mean you have a full understanding of the material of what your grade resembles. So I had to go back to the drawing board. How do you get students to be motivated to actually do their homework? My grading system was not working. The avoidance of pain of a zero on your homework was not doing it. And either more, those students, they just didn't care enough. And what I ended up having to do anyways was just curve their grades. So students eventually caught on. They just knew that, that their grade was always gonna improve at the end of the year because I would have to go ahead and curve the grades because the grades would be so bad from students not doing their homework, turning in late or doing their homework completely wrong. So to figure out how I can motivate students, I had to come up with like, why are students not doing their work? Like, and even think about myself, like why would I get frustrated when I couldn't do my homework? And one of the first things was like, I remember as a student when I didn't know how to do my homework, being so frustrated and taking so long because I completely forgot how to do the work. And even if I spent like a lot of time doing the work, sometimes I didn't even know if it was right. I had to wait till the next day or sometimes like weeks later to get the answers to my actual homework. I was just kind of going at the motions. I went to school before YouTube was around and the internet was in its infancy. So I didn't really have the ability to type in my math question and get help like you guys do now. But I had to stare at the math book and try to hope that my brain would finally get things clicking. And it was frustrating. So the first thing I decided to do for my students was give them the answers to their homework, right? If students are gonna cheat, they're still gonna cheat, right? Everything is online now. You have apps, you have websites, you have YouTube videos, right? You even have AI that can solve your answers, right? But the whole purpose of me giving you homework is not to do busy work. The whole purpose of me giving you homework is to either broaden the context or the understanding of the material that we learned in class. So rather than try to fight students that are cheating and, and those that are actually doing the work, I just say, hey, here's your work. If you really want to cheat and you want to copy all my answers, 
First of all, I'm gonna definitely be able to know. But second of all, it's not gonna help you in the long run, right? Here's the answers. The reason why I'm giving you the answers and as well as the worked out solutions is so that you can actually make sure that you are doing everything correctly. I want you to spend 20, 30 minutes on your homework. I don't want to spend two hours doing this. So I'd give them a printout of the answers as well as make a video recording of me going through the work. So therefore, if they did get stuck, they knew they could always jump onto that recording and kind of watch the way that I was doing it. Now, some students took advantage of this for the learning purpose. And again, some students took advantage of this for the grade purpose, meaning just copied down the work. But again, they still had to be assessed on their tests. And I'm here to let you know, it did not work out for them. The next thing that I thought was important for students was to give them time for their homework, right? Why does homework have to be done the next day? Now I get it as a math teacher, we're like moving on, right? Like one day we're teaching something, the next day we're teaching something else. So I want students to be able to, you know, do their work because if you're waiting to like the night before the test and you're trying to do all of your homework, that's not really going to be beneficial for you, right? Um, you got, you kind of got to be consistent. So I kind of struggled with this one because I wanted students to be doing their homework daily. That's one thing I preach as a teacher to try to be consistent with your learning and practicing of math rather than try to cram and do a whole bunch at one time, try to do a little bit from here and there because it's much easier, especially with math, which can be pretty boring at times is to kind of handle those small little chunks. So what I told students was like, all right, I don't want you to wait all the way to the test for you to make sure you have all your homework. So I have to give a deadline. Now, what this allowed is kind of two things. One, I used to not like have check-ins. Now I still checked homework every single day because I wanted to see what students were doing the homework and what students were not. So what this did was when I checked homework every day, I graded them on quiz day, but I allowed them to fix any corrections up until their test that did a couple things. The students knew that I was tracking them how they were doing their homework inside of my class. They also knew I could tell if they were copying just my work or actually doing it, but we weren't playing the carrot game. We weren't playing like, oh, you have to do your homework now. And otherwise you're going to get this grade. Like students knew like the purpose of them doing homework was for the learning not for the grade. And I wanted them to actually put in the effort. I just didn't want them to cheat or to copy my answers. Like I wanted them to do it so they could do better on the quizzes and they can do better on the test. And the feedback I got from this from students was that students thank me. They thank me for giving them extra time going through high school, going, taking a lot of classes or sports. It can be extremely stressful. And a lot of times they would just have to resort to cheating or, or not doing the homework because they just didn't have enough time. So my policy allowed them to fit in things so that they could still learn and also still get the grade that they wanted and deserved. Now, the third thing I did was I actually gave students credit. What? You gave them credit? Yes, I gave the students credit for their homework. Now you might feel like, of course you gave them credit. Doesn't every teacher give them credit? Well, actually, no. When I first was a teacher, I actually used to give them a lot of credit for their homework. Like, I can't remember, it was like 10 points each or something like that. And it usually came out to like 30% of their grade. It was a lot. And that's why students failed my class if they didn't do their homework, right? It was like way too much weight was put on their homework. And then when I was trying to like adjust, you know, getting feedback from my students, I ended up not giving credit at all. Yes, I just expected students to do work, do math work, kind of like for free, like for no credit at all. I tried to bring up this vision that they should just do it for the learning, for the educational purpose of doing homework, but I'm not going to give you any credit. And students hated that. They absolutely hated it. Um, that was one of the biggest feedbacks that I got. I remember at the end of the year, they're like, just give me credit for my homework. Like Miss McLogan is a great homework. More students would have passing grades if he gave students the initiative to do work and force homework others than that. Pretty cool. If I'm doing the work, like I understand the purpose of like, uh, I'm should be doing this for like the learning and not the grade, but I'm like, I'm putting in a lot of time doing this homework. I kind of want to get something in return, right? They wanted some credits. So that's what I decided. I gave the students credit, but I knocked down homework assignments instead of like 10 points each, I gave them like two points each. And at the end of each semester, this roughly came into a roughly around 10% of the grade. It was not a lot, but I liked it because what it did is if a student was at like a high B, Usually their homework grade, if they did their homework, that would get them up to an A. It wouldn't take them from a low B to an A, like when I was a first year teacher, but it took them from a high B to an A. But the other thing is I didn't give them zeros if they didn't do the homework. As long as students did better on their tests and their quizzes than their homework, then I dropped the homework grade. So my incentive was obviously do your homework guys, because unless you're getting hundred percent on your tests and quizzes, your homework grade is going to improve your grade. It is going to help you right? And there's nothing worse than ending off your grade at like an 89%. And because you didn't do the homework, I'm not rounding up your grade. And yes, I stood firm on that. You have an opportunity to do your homework. And that is what I'm telling you to do. 
And if you don't do your homework and you expect me to round your grade or improve your grade of any regard, like, no, I'm not going to do it. Once I stopped dropping homework grades, I didn't have to curve the grade like I did when I was a beginning teacher. The grades were the grades and they were finalized. Now, is this the perfect way to assess students on the homework? I don't know. What do you think? I think it worked really, really well. And, and there's actually part of me that wished I would have stayed a classroom teacher for a little bit longer to really put this into practice. But I only was able to do this for a couple years and then the pandemic hit and that kind of messed everything up. And I'm not even sure if this would still work actually now post pandemic because obviously the whole educational sphere has dramatically shifted from there. But still, I really like the idea of make, of not incentivizing students with their grades for homework, giving them time, giving them the answers, and then also giving them credit for doing it, but not overly penalizing them for not doing it. I feel my grades were fair. And that was the number one thing that I always ask students at the end of the year. Like, was my grading policy fair? You might not agree with it. You might have felt you deserved an A or deserved a B, but do you feel like it was fair? I don't care if you think I wasn't fair. I was fair.